field who could be, who, you know, he's running really fast over the 3K and 5K, so he's an inter interesting addition. He's got a, a 29.32. 10, I think he's going to crush that tonight. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and they're off. The men are off here for the pre-classic men's 10,000 meters. I know it's a little confusing yeah. <laughs> to call it pre-classic 10,000, but there'll be two pre-classic 10,000 meters this year. Exactly. <laughs> so you could see the inside there. We've got the Red Lightning Express, Josh Thompson up front, and Sam Atkin, too. Keep an eye on him. He ran 13.03 indoors. Right, good point. <laughs> British athlete. Oh, Woody Kincaid wearing the hat. <laughs> nice. You never know what to expect from wild Woody Kincaid. <laughs> but he's the cat in the hat tonight. <laughs> so we've got Ollie Hoare up front here, too, coming back from the 1500. And... You can tell it's cold out because he's he's just leaving the shirt on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First pacing duties. On yeah, on running makes some fine apparel <laughs> yeah. too. So <laughs> that's probably a very comfortable T-shirt he's wearing. <laughs> so about 63 seconds through the first lap here. 63.7. So right on, they'll look into settle into 64s. 64 seconds. So. Uh, just so everybody's aware, that's 418 pace, which is 2644 pace. Galen <laughs> Rupp's American record. So that is, <laughs> <laughs> that's fast. Getting out and getting right on it, just like the women. And we saw, yeah, we saw Elise take her shot, and uh, she was very close. So... <laughs> If, if these guys are jumping on uh, 60, 64 pace right away, we can expect that they mean business exactly. and, and that they can deliver. That's what they came here to do tonight. <laughs> Ollie Hoare, Josh Thompson, Sam Atkin, Woody Kincaid. So about a 64 second lap there, I believe, for for the second lap and we're coming up to a K yeah 64.4 for lap two so yep this front pack has clearly separated themselves and the second pack is is paced by Ryoma Aoki right, so, so right on 239 through the first K they're right on on uh, American record pace. And it looks like the second pack is settling right into 66 low, so right on right on pace for them as well for that 27 28. And not always the most amicable relationship between the Bowerman Track Club and Galen Rupp, but a lot of respect <laughs> shown between them in, in this last year uh, as there there were some great shots of um, of hugs and and congratulations on the track in the 10,000 meter Olympic trials when, when um, Woody and Mo made the team. There. Right, right. Uh, and I, I'm sure that Galen Rupp is tuning in, watching tonight. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so hello, Galen Rupp. <laughs> I'm sure that's always, that's got to be a unique experience when you're a record holder, what, you know, tuning in to watch, watch people go after your time. <laughs> Something not many of us experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that meme of uh, Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio sitting on the couch pointing yeah. at the... <laughs> <laughs> pointing at the screen. <laughs> so there, yeah, there are some fantastic Japanese athletes in this race too. Notably Yamato Yoshi, uh, who's 20 years old, but uh, I believe when he was 18, ran a 61-minute half marathon. So a lot of talent there, and he has been training with the Bowerman Track Club in right. Flagstaff. So having that strength that, that young will def definitely set you up to run a fast 10K for sure. Yeah, and we'll, we're getting to the mile marker here, so let's see what the front pack is looking like. And the front pack is, has passed 1,600 meters here, so we'll keep an eye on them. But 
But Ollie Hoare still at the front. Josh Thompson, Sam Atkin, Woody Kincaid, Mohamed, and Grant Fisher. And yeah, this th it's going to stay like this for a while, <laughs> I assume. Yeah, everyone looks nice and comfortable as they should at this point in the race. Yeah, Ollie Hoare now pulling wide, leaving it to Josh Thompson now. Josh Thompson, the 1500 meter specialist for the Bowerman Track Club. He's got a 335 best, but right now <laughs> his duties are just to go as far as he can, 64 second pace. Exactly. It looks like they're still spot on. And 1600 meters was reached in 416.45. We didn't have a shot on that at that time, uh, but that was a 64. 64-1 lap for that. So just clicking off 64s at this point. And yeah, yeah. Visually, it looked like they're right around 520 for, the, for that 2K, just spotting it by eyesight. So, yeah, Josh Thompson, Sam Atkin. Woody Kincaid, and you have to think that there a lot of thought has gone into the order <laughs> of these three athletes behind the front front two there. Um, you know, I don't know. I, w I wonder if there's thought, or sometimes it's just how you get, maybe. <laughs> you know, is it just kind of how you get off the line? I, I'm not really sure on that one. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but yeah, these, these guys are, are friendly uh, friendly at the moment, but uh, late into the race, they'll turn into, well, there'll be some friendly fire, of Ex course. Exactly. And scanning back on the splits, it looks like that second pack is right hitting 66 points, so they're still on pace as well. 2K was reached in 520. So, yeah, we're we're a little behind schedule for <laughs> lap splits here. But yeah, 2,400 meters, 64 as well. So that was 625. We definitely have a huge, nice, huge pace line for this, the giant second pack. So a lot of, a lot of men going to run fast and hit their times in that pack tonight as well. Yeah, so rounding this bend here, coming down onto the straight, at the end of this straight, they'll be at 3,000 meters. So we'll see what that time is there. You can see Coach Jerry Schumacher there in the distance. So right about eight flat. That is, that is certainly a fast, <laughs> fast first 3K, but right on pace. Eight flat for 3,000 <laughs> meters. That is... That is American record pace still in the first almost third of the race. Josh Thompson swinging wide, it looks like. So he's made it to 3,200 meters in 833. Eight thirty three for 3,200 meters there. So still right on pace. Yeah, 64s. Now it'll be interesting to see if if the guys swap laps or how you know how they want to work this for the next chunk of the race. It looks like Woody might be talking a little bit to either it was Coach Schumacher back there or or maybe Mo there, and Sam Atkin at the front here, the British athlete, uh, three weeks ago, 13:03 in in Boston. So all four of these men have run a fast 5K this indoor season and, you know, fit and ready to rip this one. That's true. 13.03 for Atkin up there. 13.05 for Woody. Uh, 12.56 for Mo. <laughs> 12.53 for Grant. Exactly. So <laughs> no lack of speed in this pack. And when Grant Fisher ran that 12.53, he was so close to the overall American record, indoors right. and out. <laughs> 
held by Bernard Lagat. So he is, <laughs> yeah, he's getting into a uh, into rarefied territory here. It looks like they're running 65s in the second pack on the most recent lap, so they're keeping that rolling as well. 65, so 27-28 is the world standard, which is 66s, so they're so under they're, that. Right. And if, if those guys can get a critical mass of people running that pace too, there, there's a a huge string of men at that pace right yeah, now. So there's, Look at that. Yeah, they should absolutely be able to keep that rolling. <laughs> yeah, and you have to think that they could launch people up a little further too. Oh, even Lopez has got the, the Jagger headband going today. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that is Ryoma Aoki up front. Looks like. Connor McMillan running aggressive. And that's Patrick Deaver behind Aoki, who is the reigning NCAA champ and a British athlete, too. He ran at Tulsa. And Tuntevate behind him, he ran 27-17 last year for the, in the 10K here at the 10. And that's the, the uh, Thai national record. But, yeah, Lopez Lamont back there. Connor McMillan sandwiched between Tuntevate and Lopez Lemong. So that pack is yeah running 65 high, 66 low. And we're rolling into 4K. So if we can get a shot at the lead pack again, we'll see what 4K Sound oh, like sorry. We are past. <laughs> we are past that. Yeah, our splits are a hair behind, but we'll we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. So here's the lead pack. So we've got Sam Atkin at the front. Woody Kincaid, Mohamed, and Grant Fisher. So if you take a look at Mohamed's war chest here, he's made four world teams, uh, or three world teams, sorry, two Olympics, and he's got a bronze medal at World Championships, silver medal at the Olympics, so 5,000 meters. Very impressive career. <laughs> Absolutely. So far, the men haven't swapped leads yet, so I'm, I'm curious on how long this will maintain or if they'll start swapping laps at some point. So that was 64.5 through 4,800. So we're coming up on 5,000 meters right now at this point, and look at the time on the clock here you <laughs> what you rarely see this for uh for a 10k split they're 13 22 pretty much spot on american record pace <laughs> 13 22 for sam atkin 26 44 is is american <laughs> record pace and grant fisher sitting on the back of that pack has his sights on it woody kincaid up in second place there uh an american athlete mohamed Sandwiched in between the Canadian, and now Atkin has done his job getting to 13:22. Exactly. And it looks like, well, he's he's stepping off. Yes, looks like it's job done for the evening. Okay, <laughs> now it's a race between the three teammates up front. Woody Kincaid up front, wearing the hat, Mohamed, and Grant Fisher. So Woody Kincaid is is up front here, charged with pacing duties at the moment, <laughs> but that we don't know. Exactly. That's we don't know what the plan is. We'll see how it plays out. We don't know what the plan is, and, and this is impressive to see Woody at the front at this point in the race, too. 
normally he's a guy that kind of uh, he can he can lag back a sits little. Sits back bit. and slingshots and surprises you at the end. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Another 64 second lap for Woody Kincaid up front. Okay, so down the back straight. We are Looks like they're sticking right on those pace lights. <laughs> so 1603 is 2644 pace as they come up to 6,000 meters here. So and still almost spot on. <laughs> right at 16.03 for Woody Kincaid. And this is it. The Bowerman Track Club have three men launching into the unknown <laughs> at this point, seeing what they can come back with. What can the three of these men do here? They're, this is a huge statement from this team. And yeah. It, <laughs> These teams shaping up in, in American distance running are something special. I think we've seen uh, running clubs become uh, more than just training groups together. They're becoming full-on professional teams with racing strategies and tactics. And this is a, this is a, a winning strategy here <laughs> when you launch three men up front. Absolutely. And all able to work together to, this, yeah, to get this done. Because it's incredible. one of these men is going to take this. <laughs> And this, this win will go to the Bowerman Track Club tonight, <laughs> barring that's, catastrophe. That's without a doubt. <laughs> so that was 17. So around another 64 there, uh, 64 and change. Yeah, I'm curious if if they're going to swap off or if Woody's just going to take it for as long as he can. Yeah. We don't know what's been talked about in, exactly. the, uh, in the hotel rooms down here in <laughs> San Juan Capistrano. But I have to imagine that this is a calculated move. Uh, the pack behind them running 65 second laps still. So they're still right un they're under that world standard pace. So here they are coming up to 6,800 meters. In 18.11, 64 flat. And we're going to take you to an interview with Elise Cranny right now with the Potts Brothers, and we'll be right back. All right, I'm here with Elise Cranny. Just ran 30.14. One second off the American record. Now, last year you were here, it was your first 10K ever. And you ran 30.47, which was incredible. But how do you go from running, how do you go from being like a 1500 meter runner to now you're running one second off the American record? What happened? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm still not sure. I was just saying it seems crazy that a year ago was the first time I ran a 10K and I was like, I don't know if I'm sold on it. I might not do another 10K. And here we are like trying to go after the record today. But I think, you know, that's just where I'm so grateful for, you know, Jerry, like Shalane, the entire group just, you know, doing a lot more uh, strength training. I think especially like in the fall and then in the winter, like doing a 10K and trying to work more on that just like strength side of things has been, has been really good for me. So I'm starting to like the event a little more but yeah going out uh way faster in a 5k this year than last year definitely makes the last little bit feel feel different <laughs> at least it's been incredible to see your development i'll even say like back in like high school you were uh, you were you were a phenom you were the top 
running with the pros, basically. But I heard she overheard Shalane say she believes you can break 30 minutes in a 10K. Now, I'm just trying to think, like, what would you have thought if she told you that the night before this meet last year? Uh, I... I would not have believed her. Yeah, I think I think it's crazy. You know, I mean, even I think last year I was like, didn't think that I could break 31. Like we were going to get the standard, and then I think for Chris and I to you know break that 31 minute barrier. And I think um, you know I've kind of said this to a couple people, but I think running in Tokyo this summer just really opened my eyes. I think to you know wanting to like really be up there on the global stage. And so I think you know they're running 29 low. You know, you have a lot of people. You know at the that level and at the Olympics running like in the 2019 so I think to be able to you know break 30 minutes hopefully one day soon is is something that'll be exciting well that was honestly my next question for you but congratulations on everything we can't wait to see you break that American record short soon whenever you're out on the track again but great job today and uh, back to you Jeff all right thanks guys Okay, since we've been gone, they've passed 7K in 1842, which is a second under American record pace. And Mohamed has gone to the front. Woody Kincaid has dropped. You've all seen that. Mohamed has locked in, and he's running 63-second laps right now, as Centrowitz would call it, 63 bombs. <laughs> and these guys both look great. Yeah, they look stellar right now. It's going to mean exciting, exciting finish. <laughs> so they're coming up to 8,000 meters. This will be 2K to go. 21 22 so still one second under american record pace <laughs> one second and, under american record pace and Mo, Mo is almost like he's well under his canadian record pace so he's he's got a giant you know cushion cushion going <laughs> it's his it's his to take he already has it 26 59 <laughs> is is the canadian record grant fisher has his sights set on mohamed right now but also galen rupp and 26.44, what of the top 10,000 meter times ever run? Absolutely, uh, it's a huge mark. So it's it'd be a huge accomplishment for both of these men tonight. And this is a two man race at this point. So they're working together, but <laughs> I, they each want to take this win. I. I mean, you can imagine what the kind of chatter that goes on <laughs> on the dirt roads out in Flagstaff amongst this crew. Absolutely. But the great thing is that they do have each other to push when these, you know, when we get down to the, the last mile and you're feeling that lactic and super heavy when it kind of jumps on you. They have each other to keep pushing and, and competing against. So that was 8,400 meters that they just passed. They're running so fast, I realized, yeah, we're already, as I was talking, we're already at a mile to go. <laughs> and now Mohamed is... Pulling back, and Grant Fisher is taking the lead. They're sharing pacing duty still at, at this point, inside two th or with yeah inside two thousand meters to go. Uh, so they're still working together right now. When does that break, and when are we going to see them turn on each other? We'll find out. I think both of these men have such good finishes that I think they're going to keep working together until we're pretty close to the finish. I'd say 600, 400 to go. Okay. Unless someone's really feeling amazing. <laughs> we are coming up to 8,800 meters right now. Grant Fisher in the lead, looking powerful with his arm carriage. 63.88. Yeah, just clicking off roughly. 63, 64 points. So no sign of letting up here, and they're going to come up to 9, 9K uh, as they round this bend and come down the straight, and then... That's obviously a K to go, but we'll give you a checkpoint when we get to that chapter. 9K uh, is 2404 for 2644 uh, record pace. So here we go. And they're under. They are two <laughs> seconds under. Grant Fisher at the front. So there's inside a K to go. We're in the final chapter of this 10,000 meter race. The American record and the Canadian record are in serious jeopardy here. Absolutely. And I, I think they're gonna, yeah, it's gonna come down to the last four to 600 before they really kind of show their cards to each other. 800 meters to go. That, that was about a 60, 
uh, I got 62.7 there. So <laughs> it could have been a 63, but But 63 very close point to it. at slowest, probably. So now they're just stockpiling change <laughs> in here. Like they know they're under the time, and yeah, it's just a matter when they decide to start racing. Inside 800 meters to go. How many 800 meters have they run in their <laughs> careers? How many, how many times have they been in? Exactly, in this position in practice. <laughs> yeah, this is what they've trained for. This is what they've gone through the gauntlet at those legendary Bowerman Track Club altitude camps, too. And still looking extremely good here. Look at Grant Fisher. Look at Mohamed. They both look great. They both look like they're looking around, kind of gathering themselves, getting ready for the finish. Going by Lowy Lalang here. They're coming up on a bell lap. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Stay in your seats. You won't witness anything like this <laughs> in your lifetimes. 62.5 yeah. at the bell lap. 62.5 for the penultimate lap. Yeah, this is crazy fast. And this is the final lap. They're stuck to each other like glue here. <laughs> Grant Fisher at the front. Mohamed right behind him as they go down the back straight. And they're ratcheting the pace <laughs> down. Mo Ahmed swings wide. They're going to have to weave through this traffic. Yes. He moves to the front. And Grant's not dropped yet, though. <laughs> 200 meters to go. Can Grant stay in touch? Mo Ahmed unfolds that stride. He's got 150 meters to go. The Canadian, the Olympic silver medalist at 5,000 meters. You can't count Grant out, though. <laughs> Don't count him out. He's coming back. Who's going to take this? Mohamed at the front. Grant Fisher yeah. behind him. This is unbelievable. Here it is. Grant Fisher takes the lead again. <laughs> Teammates in national records. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they just ran 26-33. Yeah, 33-34. And I don't actually know what that's got to put them pretty high all time. I don't, I don't know the stats. Somebody checked that we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so the American record was twenty six forty four. So crushed it by eleven seconds. That's incredible. Eleven whole seconds from Grant Fisher, Mohamed twenty six thirty four, rewriting the record books. And let's let's check out this race now. Turn to vape. And we still got some men finishing really fast and going to get under that world standard. Turn to Vade here, coming to the line. Jack Rayner, 27-15, the Australian. Great he, run for McGordy as well. Jack Rayner takes the Australian record from uh, Pat Tiernan, previously 27-22. And a huge PR for Jack Rayner. Sean McGordy debut for the 10,000 meters. Patrick Deaver, 27.33, so a great showing for him. So also a time for Connor Mance. He was under the world qualifier. Incredible. And I'm told Grant Fisher's time is number seven all time. Wow, that's an incredible performance. To be in that top 10 all time in the world, like that's amazing. The, and wow and like we said all night so many people pulled the fast times and PRs in all these races <laughs> I don't know what to say yeah. here <laughs> Mohamed's jogging by us that boy Grant <laughs> there they are the two men who made the evening this is their night <laughs> taken just performance. chops <laughs> out of the record book here. 26-44. I don't think anybody thought that would be touched for a long time no. before this year. And to smash it, you know. It, I'm, you know, you would have thought maybe 40 at best, but 26-33 and 34. Only after, only I would say only after BU had it crept into the consciousness right. <laughs> of American distance running that this something like this was even possible. Grant Fisher ran 1253 indoors and now 2633 we <laughs> what I I thought I thought I was uh I was crazy when I said earlier in the broadcast that uh it had been talked about that Mohamed was in 2630 shape for But a that while. was yeah, spot on basically. <laughs> spot on. Believe everything you hear, yeah. folks. <laughs> 
like look at that. And there's still, uh, there's still energy to skip through this, too. Yeah, incredible races. I can't believe this. So we, we're going to try to get interviews with them. We're going to try to track down Mo, but he's, he's got too much energy, and he's <laughs> running away from everybody. So throwing armbands to who knows, who knows where. I don't know. <laughs> Jen, I just want to say this is an incredible evening, and I'm, I'm happy that you were here to, to share it with you. This is, this is amazing. I yeah, thanks so much for having me. That I mean, it's it's been amazing to call these races. <laughs> I don't even know what to say at, <laughs> at this point. It's I mean, we're all going to go to sleep tonight just trying to piece together the absurdity that we just witnessed and and leveling up distance running on the continent, I right, would say, because right. we have Canadians, we have uh, Americans running well. I mean, uh U.S. based Australian runners, but yeah, but like Jack all different nationalities, right? Yeah, that's tremendous performances. Let's see here, Jack. <laughs> I know Jack Rayner's uh, personal best. That was uh, twenty-seven fifty-nine. That's a that's a big chunk. <laughs> that's a, yeah, and uh, those kinds of things. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say they seem commonplace at this point, but, but it's nuts. It's great to see people, yeah, taking advantage, though, of this, this meets like this and that Sound is putting on on this, like, amazingly fast track. Everyone comes, takes advantage, and gets the job done. Yeah, kudos to Sound Running <laughs> for, for pulling this off. Thank you to all the sponsors. Thank you to uh, Pre Classic and, and Track Town for bringing the wave lights down. Ufos. I mean. <laughs> it's a collective effort. Yeah, yeah guys, get some, <laughs> get some recovery sandals, please. <laughs> And uh, like, let's get let's get more great people supporting the sport like this. And uh, we're we're here in a sleepy little coastal town in Southern California, but there's but look fireworks. what's possible. Exactly. <laughs> these these kinds of things are possible anywhere. Like and it's great to see that we're doing it in the U.S. Because like back in my era, we did these not as fast, but this type of thing always in Europe. You know, on certain fast tracks, but now we're able to do it over here. You know, and the, it's like the magic's possible anywhere. We yeah, uh, it's 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 up to us. It's up to athletes. It's up to fans. If if we make if we place importance on something and make it special, it can be that way. You can make any meat that you put on like that. Right. You just have to breathe it into it. Exactly. And that definitely happened tonight. This place is a buzz. Um, it's a good thing um, everyone was able to push it back a day because <laughs> this all wouldn't have been possible <laughs> yesterday in the gale force wind. So amazing that everyone had that flexibility. It's all it's all worth it now. Yes. It's, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And oh man, that that's unreal. <laughs> we're we're tracking the guys down for an interview right now, but. And here, yeah, we've got the replay there. So. You look at the kind, like, <laughs> these guys are coming in, too. Oh, look at this. And I also think this, you know, we know Grant has this type of finish, and this is going to be really great for him, his confidence going into Worlds this year. I mean, assuming everything goes great and he makes the team, but when you have that last gear over that last 100, you know, that's going to set him up really nicely. <laughs> that's true. The way that they closed is I mean, we know Mo has it, and now we know obviously they both have it. So, mm -hmm. both sets them up great for world champs. The ascendancy of Grant Fisher <laughs> is is unreal. Last year, uh, we see it meet director Jesse Williams walking by us, which is thumbs up, <laughs> looking like this. But uh, yeah, the ascendancy of Grant Fisher last year, play or running twenty seven eleven to place second in this race to to Mad Mark Scott, his teammate, <laughs> and. Uh, and then it wasn't until the sound running invite that he turned the tables on, on Mark Scott. And I feel like in that period of time, he kind of figured some things out, thought, like, maybe I left it too late. I can, I can push earlier or from right. further out. Right. And then to see that kind of uh, that thought and that education and that, uh, that growth happen, too, right. over time, and to bring us here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we can't forget that the man placed fifth at the Olympics, too, in this distance. Yeah. So. No, I did. Exactly. Got to give him props for that as well. <laughs> yeah. Now he's ready to move up to the hardware. <laughs> yeah, he is. And that's that's what matters in this sport. Um, I mean, uh, what you want to get your hands on on what Mo Med already has exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we could see those there on the screen. 
and and Grant Fisher setting himself nicely or setting himself up nicely for that, especially as the World Championships come to Eugene this year. Yes, so. exactly. Great timing. <laughs> yeah, get your uh, get your Grant Fisher T-shirts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Go fishing. <laughs> um, yeah, who knows? I don't know if we are going to get an interview on the broadcast with them this evening, but. Oh, I'm hearing that uh, the guys are putting on warm-ups, and and we're going to be getting them. So we'll we'll bring that to you shortly. And if you if you need to go to to bed on the East Coast, <laughs> then we'll we'll have this available for rewatch in the morning, and and you can catch it then. But I'm sure everyone yeah. is thrilled they stayed up to watch that that race, though. <laughs> it's I completely mean, worth it. Yeah, <laughs> around the world, around the world, people are tuning in. I know. And and you can see the results on the screen scrolling past right now. So Connor Mance, also a huge, huge Exactly. PR he there. got a standard. Yeah. 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 Really versatile athlete. <laughs> yeah. That guy has a bright future. Uh, I mean, I just, I can't wrap my head around those times. <laughs> Grant Fisher, 26-33. Mohamed, 26-34. Yeah, Jack it's... It's crazy, like you said, the jumps over the years. Because going back to my era, the year Chris Selinski broke 27 at Stanford, it was yeah. like the same kind of shock is like today, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. Now, uh, now we're now we're down to 2633. <laughs> you could say that Grant Fisher's standing on the shoulders of, of Chris Selinski yeah. here, being part of that same training group and that legacy. <laughs> and uh, those are strong shoulders to stand on as well. <laughs> we could see Courtney Frerickson. Uh, Andrea Sekafian cooling down there. Yeah, that was a nice strong run for Courtney, first first 10K. Absolutely. And these these early season meets, too, uh, it's it's nice to see, yeah, like we talked about earlier, athletes mixing it up and, and, and running a bit longer or running yeah. a different distance. I mean, I feel like moving up to a 10K is always good for that kind of toughness, getting used to grinding it out, obviously, so... You know, it kind of sets you up nice to drop back down in distance. Yeah. There's Vanessa Frazier doing a cool down there. I think she, she got a PB tonight. She may not. She didn't slip under that world time, but she did get under 32 and run a PB. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, somewhere Luis Grijalva is getting his hair cut, <laughs> I think. That's going to be a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the hair looks great. Yeah, Vanessa Frazier, 31.52 tonight. So, uh, yeah, good showing for her. And a big one for Paige Stoner as well. That's a big PB in 31.22. Yes, yeah. And Millie. Millie Millie's been running great as well. Palladino, fifth like in the shorter stuff and now moving up to the 10K. Yeah, fifth place for Millie Palladino tonight of that uh, New Balance Boston team. And... uh They've got a good stable out east, too. Yeah, and they were also up in flag, you know, putting in that altitude. So makes sense that she was strong for this 10K. Nice, yeah. Man, what? So prize purses tonight. We've seen a lot of sweetening of the pot <laughs> uh, for these races, which is, which is incredible. Thank you very much to, to all of you who have done that, uh, the brands and the individuals that have... Uh, that have contributed. I mean, it's people like you that that keep this sport going. So, uh, our model too is is that if yeah, if we're if we're bringing in, um, we think that athletes deserve a share of of the broadcast revenue. And just like all other major sports in the U.S., the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, they all get around 50% of the broadcast revenue to athletes. So, got to professionalize this right. and, and make sure that uh, athletes get get paid based on performance and uh, what what performances we saw tonight. It's certainly very all well, very well deserved. Yeah, I, I mean. All right, we're getting the interview in less than two minutes. I guess after you've run 26:33. Uh, you deserve to take some time. I was going to say you don't get the immediate interview. Exactly. You yeah. Gotta, you got to wait a few minutes. <laughs> I would prefer that they catch their breath. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to hear some generic answers from yeah. these guys. 
<laughs> let's let's get the real them. Yeah, no, uh, right. it'll be more interesting than that. Yeah. But yeah, I did I did catch at the very end when we could hear Elisa's interview that she was talking about, you know, hey, I want to be competitive on the world stage, so I got to be running in the 29s. So you could really see that that was the attitude that was really driving her tonight. She was like, you know, I got to be running sub 30 if I want to be competing with the best in the world. So it's good to see her that fired up, you know, after a race tonight. Well, and you have to think that that's possible, too. Oh, if you ran this, this. if you right, if you ran one in 30, 14, doing a lot of it on your own, it's, yeah, certainly possible. Yeah. And, yeah, there's Wild Woody Kincaid (laughs) there. It'll be his time soon. Something we see from the Bowerman Track Club is that they they rotate workhorses around a plate of the hot hands. So, right. um, Yeah. One day the race will be set up for him soon, as it was in uh, on the Nike campus when he ran 12.58 a couple of years ago. Right, right. And maybe, yeah, another time that this team shocked the world, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> yeah, that one was, that was a fast one as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even got Centro to 13 flat, right, that day? Even yeah. Centro. <laughs> yeah. My guy. <laughs> Yeah, we need more uh, Matt Centrowitz on the world stage again, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he's been taking a hiatus now, but I want to see him back in the ring soon. Right, right. The track world's a better place when Matt Centrowitz yeah. is in it. <laughs> exactly. All right, cooling down. Elise Cranny there. <laughs> Sekafian, Lucia Stafford. And the interviews are coming over, so we're going to get the Potts brothers on screen with uh, Grant Fisher and Mohamed, I believe. And uh, we know that we're going to get something interesting out of them, I bet. (laughs) Yeah. What? I mean. How can you not have something interesting when you just ran that fast? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So they came through. They came through in 13.22, so 13.11. Right, so they even ran negative split. <laughs> yeah, thirteen eleven second five k, and there was a time in American distance running when that—that's a top gold time, standard. exactly, exactly. Yeah, I can remember uh, when I was younger watching guys like Tim Bro. Right, exactly, 13, closer 12. to my era. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was that was a great race, exactly. Yeah, great that. performance. Yeah, thirteen twelve was yeah. That's an incredible. I think Meb's PB is like thirteen eleven. I know he was more ten k marathon, but still, that was like still considered very fast. Yeah, that's yeah. we we have to readjust our our exactly. idea of yeah what <laughs> what's possible. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna go to interview with.